vehicle currently being tested has reached one of the highest levels of autonomy. CP Plus is the world premier show for camera and photo imaging. The cameras on display this year are classic examples of new innovations being based on older ones. Bankoyaki is a type of Japanese pottery that dates back to the 18th century. But what we'll be seeing today is a combination of a traditional craft and space-age precision technology. When most people get their first driver's license, they never imagined that someday they might be able to get behind the wheel of a car and do absolutely nothing while their car made its way to their destination. But if you happen to be in Yokohama these days, you might be able to do just that. A new road service called Easy Ride is road testing its very own driverless cars. Here we are in Yokohama City. There's an autonomous car mixed in with the other vehicles. Can you spot it? There it is! It's in the middle of a field test on public roads. Although there is a man sitting in the driver's seat as a precaution, he isn't touching the steering wheel. Easy Ride is a mobility service being jointly developed by Nissan and DNA using commercially available EVs. Despite its relatively ordinary appearance, it's outfitted with a radar device and several laser scanners and cameras. The sensory equipment allows it to monitor its environment and make decisions on the go, resulting in a smooth ride. In this field test, the participants simply selected a destination along a preset route in the city and were transported there by a self-driving vehicle. Approximately 300 people participated in the two-week event. Although the route for the test was preset, the AI is capable of determining the optimal route based on real-time traffic conditions. While the vehicles were remotely monitored, meaning that they weren't completely autonomous, the field test was a big step forward for the service. Let's hear about the mobility service from one of the participants. The manufacturer tells us that it hopes to create a new transportation system with its mobility service. We also spoke with a representative from the company that manages the service side of the project. While DNA is an IT company, it established a department dedicated to testing autonomous driving technologies several years back. Automotive manufacturers and IT companies around the world are putting the development of self-driving technologies into full gear. SAE stands for Society of Automotive Engineers, a non-profit organization in the U.S. that develops standards for self-driving technologies. It defines six levels for autonomous driving, ranging from 0 to 5. Conventional vehicles are a level 0, 
while fully autonomous vehicles are a level 5. Level 3 means that while conditions are set regarding the area and speed, the computer handles the driving on its own. Meanwhile, a level 4 or 5 vehicle is completely automated. As of now, no commercial vehicle has reached this level. Let's take a look at a future in which level 5 cars have been implemented. Once you find a shop you want to visit, you can make a reservation. At the appointed time, a self-driving car arrives to pick you up. The door is unlocked using a smartphone. The vehicle pretty much operates as a taxi. The cars of the future will also work closely with the internet. And they'll be much more than a simple means of transportation. With the aging population in Japan, self-driving services like this are a must-have. The relationship between people and automotive vehicles is set to enter a new stage within several years. And it may be vastly different from what we currently envision. Some people are concerned with safety and liability in the case of accidents involving automated transportation. But for people who are unable to drive themselves for whatever reason, driverless cars could lead to a whole new level of independence. Any emerging technology has its challenges, but perseverance and determination lead to solutions for almost all of them. And once again, dramatic new innovation comes from building on existing technology. For over 50 years, CP Plus has been one of the premier events for camera makers worldwide to show off their newest products. Its location in Yokohama is no fluke. The digital camera market is dominated by Japanese manufacturers with no less than seven of the top ten brands being Japanese. Akita Daniel Duncan is on site at this year's event. Wow, there are so many people. I can't even see the end of the line. Hi, I'm Akira Daniel Duncan and I'm at CP Plus 2018. One thing about this exhibition is that it clearly captures the trends of the particular year. And this year we're seeing a lot of companies shift their focus from SLRs to mirrorless cameras. And it's a move that seems to be supported by many of the camera aficionados here today. Now, let's go inside and see some of the latest models for ourselves. All these photography fans are here on a weekday to get their hands on the latest and greatest new gear. Sony is decidedly moving towards the high end of the market with their latest offerings. This will be the first time that a lot of camera fans get to use the Alpha 7 Mark III. While it costs over $2,000, it's still an entry-level full-frame mirrorless camera. You might have to break or piggy bank. Their ever-popular mirrorless Alpha 7 series, which features full-size sensors, hasn't changed much on the outside. But basic features like autofocus are continuing to improve. One such example is their IAF autofocus system. A major issue in shooting portraits is what area to focus on to best capture the face. But even as the subject moves, this system detects and tracks the subject's eye. So the focal point is always where you need it. This is only possible with the latest model Alpha. Well, this camera uses high quality components, but it's still very user friendly. This is the Alpha 9, which was released last year. A mirrorless model, its electronic shutter allows it to achieve a blistering max speed of up to 20 frames per second of continuous shooting. Let's see how it feels. It's now in continuous mode, 
and since it's electronic, there's no sound or vibration like you'd get with a mechanical shutter. Hold on, is this thing actually taking photos? That might be what you think, because this thing has absolutely no shutter sound. It's great for places like classical concerts or anywhere that requires absolute silence. This model, the Alpha 7R Mark III, comes equipped with a 42 megapixel high resolution sensor. What kind of users do you have in mind when developing the Alpha 7 Mark III? はい、あの、特定の被写体だけではなくて、これからフルサイズを試してみたい方、そういった早間ちゃんの方ですとか、もちろんプロフェッショナルの方でも、あの、高級機ばかりお買い求めになるわけにはいかず、あの、ま、コ
demo these high aperture lenses, they've provided a suitably low-lit setting. Let's give it a shot. Well, I got some good photos. You know, looking at the photos here, I would almost say that this looks like you're using photography lighting. It's very bright. While SLRs are definitely fueling the pressure from their mirrorless competition, the die-hard fans of the Pentax brand haven't given up on them yet. The demo area for the pre-release prototype of the K1 Mark II had a massive line. It offers high sensitivity noise reduction, as well as other significant performance improvements. Fans of the line are also sure to appreciate the fact that they'll be able to upgrade their existing K1s with the same control board used in the new model. Now that's customer service. Supported by a massive global fan base, this maker needs no introduction. The high-grade SLR with a full-size sensor released by Nikon last year was a big hit. The D850 has reached a level of popularity that continues to exceed expectations. At 45 megapixels, it offers high resolution and also features high-speed continuous shooting. What's more, it's user-friendly earning major points with both professional and amateur photographers. This new accessory is sure to please old-school fans. It allows you to easily digitize film negatives using a macro lens. Uh, many other companies have a line of mirrorless cameras, but does Nikon have any plans regarding that? え、ニコワンは残念ながらこのイベントでミラーレスカメラを発表できなかったんですけども、え、常にえ、ミラーレスについては、え、開発を進めてまして、え、来年度中にはえ、なんとか発売できるんじゃないかなと思っております。Here's a look at some 8K time-lapse footage taken by the D850. It looks like the companies here are leaving the job of compact cameras to smartphones. And while smartphones are great and handy, they still can't beat the images of mirrorless cameras. And the offerings we saw today seem to be hitting their mark with their fans. I actually got one myself to keep track of my son's growth. Reporting for Great Gear, I'm Akira Daniel Duncan. See you! Thanks, Akita. Overall sales may be down, but within the photography market, mirrorless cameras are on the upswing. They've been quite popular in Japan for the last several years and are finally catching on in other countries as well. Nabe is the Japanese word for cooking pot. One style of earthenware nabe from Mie Prefecture is especially popular. Despite having a classic design and long history, this ubiquitous cooking pot has recently undergone some radical innovation, believe it or not, from a precision machining company that claims to be able to shave any material except air. About 400 kilometers west of Tokyo is the city of Yokoichi in Mie Prefecture. It's home to many factories from a wide range of industries. And it's also famous for bankoyaki earthenware. In fact, Yokoichi's highly heat-resistant earthenware cooking pots boast 80% of the national market share. But we're not headed for a factory specialized in pottery. Hello everyone. Mmm, something smells delicious. Ooh, curry. This must be lunchtime. Looks yummy. But what a peculiar pot. The shape certainly isn't traditional. The serious look on everyone's face is actually because they're testing a certain product. Yep, you guessed it, it's the cooking pot. Named Best Pot, it's the company's latest creation, which was just released this April. The pot itself is earthenware and the lid is made of stainless steel. Its biggest feature is that it cooks without the need to add water. By using only the water already contained in the ingredients, 
it preserves all the food's nutrients and brings out its natural flavor. Earthenware also helps to prevent the food from burning. So what are the test's results? It can also cook rice. You're probably curious to see how it's made. But as we said earlier, this factory isn't a pottery maker. It specializes in precision parts for industries including aerospace manufacturing. They work at micron levels of precision. They manufacture the pot's lid out of machined stainless steel with an enamel finish. We asked the company president what's so special about the lid. The weight of the lid is enough to close the pot hermetically. Just as the lid must be machined with high precision, the same goes for the pot itself. Shaving the ceramic of the pot was apparently quite a challenge. Even though they'd been producing parts for things like rockets, this was the first attempt in the company's 50-year history at processing pottery. We spoke to one of the factory's seasoned craftsmen who's been working with metal for 50 years. Have you tried food prepared with the pot? But the challenge didn't stop with their machining techniques. The pot's design is quite different from conventional earthenware cooking pots. Let's take a little peek from underneath. The construction is quite unusual. bottom has a unique double structure. In order to obtain the perfect shape for optimum heat distribution, through many trials and errors they came up with this complex design. But the innovative shape made it difficult to find a manufacturer that could produce it. After knocking on many doors, they finally came upon this factory. Taiji Mizutani is a craftsman preserving the tradition of Banko Yaki pottery. And it turns out that he and Mr. Yamazoe are high school friends. This was their first time to work together. I was told that I was going to be a little bit of a little bit of a a Creating mold after mold, Mr. Mizutani gradually perfected the result. The mold and the pot are separated carefully. The parts of the mold that overlap are where the complex shape of the bottom is formed. And this is how the pot is given its double wall construction. In addition to the molding process, Mr. Mizutani also carefully chose the best method for applying the enamel glaze to avoid any irregularities. Today, 
なんとか形ができたということでこれからもそのいろんな形に挑戦してばんこ焼きのできる可能性っていうんですかねそれを広げていきたいなと思ってます。Along with Japan, the company has also set its sights on international markets. Tona Asia, Mo, Chugo, Mo, Europe, Mo, Onajiku, Smete, Hitai, to Mo, Nesked, Mo, Mother America, De, Tegotai, O, Shikari, Kanjai, Nato, Mo, Temas. The waterless cooking pot was born from the marriage between precision metal processing and traditional pottery. And they're even coming up with new recipes. I love how the maker originally thought that creating this style of pot was impossible, but still agreed to take up the challenge. We are all capable of much more than we think. If we open our minds, persevere through difficulties, and build step by step on what we already have. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back next time with even more great gear. Until then, I'm Matthew Masada Baron. Go up!